The Conquest of Go is a game based on the Chinese board game Go. Yes, the same game played by AlphaGo and Lee Sedo in 2016. You can buy this game from Steam Store for 15 US dollars. It's only available in English in December 2020. Before we dig deeper into this game, I would like to briefly share my overall impression. For $15, this game provides you great sound and visual effects, some Go tutorials, and integration of the cutting-edge open-sourced Go AI. For beginners who only speak English, the conquest of Go is certainly a fancy and helpful tool. I am a very experienced Chinese Go player. If you were to make a comparison, for those who are familiar with chess, I am around equivalent in skill to a candidate master. Clearly, I don't need this game to learn any Go techniques, but it's still very interesting to go through the functionalities. In the main menu, you have several options, play the campaign mode, play against a human player on OGS, which stands for the online Go server. OGS is one of the most popular online Go platforms outside China. You can also play a quick game against AI, or learn some Go lessons, or go through all the terminologies. First, as a Chinese Go player, I don't actually know the English terms. This terminology page is a great resource for me to pick up the terms. As you can see, some of the terms are directly from Japanese, because in the 18th century, a guy from Germany learned Go from a Japan master, and then wrote the first Go tutorial in European language. Later, it was translated into English. Now let's look at the tutorials. There are several chapters. Some of them are just about the basic rule of Go. For example, it teaches you how to capture a stone. For beginners, these are certainly a requirement to play the game of Go. But other chapters are not so good. I mean, the last chapter is about 3x3 three three invasion. This is a very common but complicated topic. The tutorial only provides one way to deal with the invasion, which is by far inadequate. I hope they can keep updating this tutorial in the future, otherwise the beginners won't learn enough to start playing the game. So after you learn this basic stuff, you can go to the campaign mode. Before you start your new campaign, you can actually change the difficulty level of this campaign, the form of the games, for example the board size and the number of games, and some time settings. I'm very confident about my goal skill, so I'll directly go for the more difficult settings. Now we are in the world map. There are small segments of land, and each of them represents a game you need to win. Let's start by playing a 9x9 game. I'm using the Blackstone, so I move first. While you are making your moves, on the right side, you can see the terms for these moves. This is very helpful, but some of the terms are incorrect. If the stones are in danger, they will show a different viral effect. You can also change the look of the board and stone. This sand theme is my favorite one. Oh, by the way, if your stones are connected, you can see some real connections between the connected stones. For players like me, these elements are just fancy. But for beginners who are struggling with connections or stones in danger, these hints can save their lives. I'm not kidding. After I won the game, I earned some resource. You can use these resources in your games to let the cutting edge AI help you play some moves or tell you the overall status of the game. I don't need them, but the beginners might use them a lot. To finish the campaign, I assume I simply need to win all the games and conquer all the lands. If you want to see me playing the games and commenting the games in English, please leave a comment. Let's exit the campaign mode and explore the rest of the functionalities. Playing online is just match with users on OGS. I'm not gonna show this right now. Now let's go to the quick game. You can play against yourself or play against some AI. GNU Go is a very weak AI. Cutago is one of the best open source AI. And Cutago is so good that it can defeat all the best human players in the world. While you are playing the game, you can let the AI to analyze the current board status or recommend the best move. You can get all these functionalities via some open source software. 
Here, the game just packages useful functions together and makes them easy to use. So that's all for this game. To me, I really enjoy the GUI and sound effects, and uh, I'm already willing to pay the price for those reasons. For beginners, if you want to start playing Go game, this is a very good start. Thanks for watching. This is my first Go video in English. If you want to see more Go tutorials or gameplays in English, please leave a comment. Thank you so much.